gentlemen, a very good evening. My name's Callum. We've got Rowley on the show, John and Mike. And tonight we are going to talk, well, tonight in the UK, it's Monday morning, of course, in Sedale land, and it's the afternoon where John is. Tell you a quick story about Receive. Years ago, I had a little FT 1000 MP, quite an old radio, running 100 watts, and it was 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning when CQ Worldwide was running. Now, at 11 o'clock on any Sunday morning, on any time of the year, I shouldn't hear the USA on 40 metres. It's too late. But you've got to remember, there's some mega stations running multi-multi, and there'll be a guy on 40 metres getting the dribs and drabs, the last few contacts out of Europe before it completely shuts, right? And it was kc one xx He was calling CQ about 11 in the morning on 40. He was about S9. And, uh, and I give him a blast. Mike Zero, Mike Charlie X-Ray. Bearing in mind, I've got like, I don't know what it was, a G5 RV or something at 15 feet, you know. And KC1XX, I always remember, he just went like this. Whoa, big signal, M0, MCX, right. And he gave me Yankees change. Of course, I wasn't doing the heavy lifting. If you go to KC1XX and have a look at his station, he probably had a couple or three three element Yagis on 40 metres up to 200 feet in the air. He was doing it all. In other words, not only could he transmit, he was receiving fantastic as well. How many times have I called, you know, a QRZ, there's someone right in the back of the set, and Mike, M0, MSN, and I, we were out in the hills in uh, this summer, actually, just with a 100-watt radio. But there's always a guy with 10 watts, with 5 watts, with 1 watts, who gives it a go and I can't hear him. So what I wanted to do is pull Roly, John and Mike and I together to kind of just get some ideas for you of how you can improve either your signal-to-noise ratio on the one hand or on the other hand, just get some raw receive power, all right? Right then, so um, I'll open the batting. My, I haven't got a mega station. I've got quite a big plot of land, but I hire that. And that is from the, um, the farm, you know, where we are, where I've got my little factory. I've got two small loops on the ground. I've got a 90 meter loop, about 30 centimeters or one foot off the ground. It goes all around my little antenna field. And then I tried one of those tiny 15 foot square. What's that? Three and a half meters, Mike, is it 15 feet? Yep. Square, what they call a lo uh, loop on ground, L log, they call it. Tiny little transformer, and I've got one of my backup coaxes going to that. And in a minute, I will just show you um, what that does on 40 metres. Uh, maybe not, depending how much time we've got. So, uh, where do we start? I think a good start is a quick demo, in case you missed last week's, of John... Uh, NJ4Z, calling me on 20 metres because I had just put this very, very long wire. I say very, very long. It was only 160 metres long. So that's uh, eight wavelengths on 20 metres. But it's facing the USA. All right, so let's just play. Uh, it's only a few seconds. John calling me, and I'll play him on the vertical. John, you were at 100 watt station then, weren't you? No, nah, I was running 250 maybe. Okay, 250. Yeah. yeah. I'm running four or 500 my end. So there's a little bit of power disparity on the one hand. I've got all the industrial estate, uh, estate around me, which might increase my noise. But I just switched between the two antennas. So let's just have a play with that. Roger, roger, Callum. About five and two here, five and two for you. I know I'm not getting there very well. Roger, roger, Callum. About five and two here, five and two for you. I know I'm not getting there very well. Roger, roger, Callum. About five and two here, five and two for you. I know I'm not getting there very well. So, interesting stuff. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if someone on the live chat could just give us a little signal report that you can hear Roly, Mike, John and I, I know they haven't really spoken yet. We'll give them a shot in a minute. Okay. Mike's talking, but you can't hear what he's saying. Look, <laughs> he's doing his <laughs> ventriloquist act. <laughs> Roly. You should see where I've got my hands. <laughs> yeah, good, good morning, Callum, yeah. and uh, good morning, uh, John, uh, good morning, Mike, good morning, everyone, good morning, on the stream there, there's quite a few there, I see streaming away on yeah, there the, is. 
Yeah, so, that's great. Roly, in your is this only signal to noise, or is this is a little bit of brute force reception as well? Well, I think it's a little bit of a combination of both, but. Uh, uh, in, in my experience, and you know, let's take it for what it is, uh, the best results that I've ever had has been able to get the signal to noise ratio, uh, um, get a disparity between the two. So try and um, uh, get the noise down as much as you can as uh, for as much signal as you can. So it's the difference between the signal to noise which makes the difference rather than just straight out raw grunt gain, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, John, signal noise or brute force, a bit of both? For your antenna, yeah, it's it's a bit of both. I mean, you're going to pick up some extra gain with that eight wavelengths, um, but uh, I'm sure your signal noise ratio being that close to the ground was helping you out a lot. You weren't picking up a lot of the uh, electrical noise that's around your, your location mm. there. So combination. Mm. Mike, have you got, uh, bear in mind you've got other houses very close to you, you have various high noise levels here and there, do you? Yeah, um, especially on uh, 40 and 80, it's, it's relatively high. I've got a, probably S6 of noise on the uh, on the DX Commander mm. and the same on the, same on the NFED. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of squashed both ways. But I was, exp I was playing today. I was experimenting today. Uh -huh. Now, I've got a, um, an AT1500, which is a, a Polestar tuner. Okay. Oh, yeah. And <clears throat> I connected both the antennas through the A and B on the, on the Pulsar, and I was, yeah. uh, I was switching them over. Um, and if I detuned the antenna, took them out of resonance just, just a little bit, mm. You know, right. the, the signal to noise went up. I had a better, um, a lower <laughs> noise because I wasn't, it wasn't so sensitive for the frequency I was on, but the signals were beginning to punch through. Wouldn't transmit on it because it would have been SWR would have been awful, yeah. but it actually made the signals much clearer. So uh, it does this to your head. So, you know. Rowley, what's it, going on there then, worked. mate? Yeah. Um, oh. Because you're, uh, if you're, ch if you're tuning the thing, uh, uh, your noise, your in in band noise, you uh, you're picking up all the resonant in band noise, as yeah. well. So if you detune it, you get rid of all that resonant noise, and uh, you're still left with enough signal there, of course. Yep. Mm. Uh, so that, basically, I was reducing pretty... reducing all of the the uh, the noise that was coming in on frequency, but because of the yeah fact yeah what, yeah all that because of the stuff uh, but, goes out yeah the signal was high enough to punch through. So I was, mm -hmm. like yeah. I say, detuning mm -hmm. the noise. And it worked really, really well. I was quite pleased with it. Mm -hmm. Just got to remember not to transmit. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yep. that's why a lot of times you can use just a random piece of long piece of wire and it'll be better for you to receive. You can't transmit on it, yeah. but it'll, but it'll be better on your receive because you're, you're taking that out of, or that in band noise and just, you know, knocking it down because you're not tuned to any particular band. Mm -hmm. John, if you got any um, experience of either somehow finding a way of reducing your signal noise, it could be hash, you know, local electrics or something, or using some sort of dedicated receive antenna? Or... Well, I spent the day <laughs> today putting up a receive antenna. I'm not finished yet. Uh -huh. um, a friend of mine who um, is getting out of ham radio, he's an older gentleman and, and quite sick. Um, he uh, donated a bunch of his stuff to our club. Uh, WA to TGE, uh, Mike and um, he, m my buddy Darcy, and I went and picked up a bunch of stuff. But I've got a Whiskey Six uh, Lima Victor Papa receive loop with a preamp on it. So it's a vertical loop. It's about oh, about two meters in diameter. And okay. um, putting that up outside, I've got it up on the mast with the rotator, and I got the coax right to where it needs to come in the house. And then I've got to go through the attic and bring the rest of the coax mm. in. But I've done that. I've done that little 15 foot square foot loop on the ground. Um, How'd you get on with that? that? That came out good. It didn't do well on 80. I was surprised. I figured it'd be all right on 80, but it was really good on 40. Um, Mine's very good on 40. Yeah. yeah. I have never done any DX listening on it though, John, only daytime stuff on 40, but it, it really balanced everything out. Yeah. I've had some good luck. I've heard, you know, better with Aussies in the morning on 40 for here, you know, five, five o'clock in the morning we get, Rainline mm. propagation into BKs and ZLs, 
And I actually can hear them better on that little receive loop on 40 than I could on my, you know, my big loop. I've got an 80 meter loop sitting out back here. So uh, tell me about that loop. It's an 80 meter full wave of uh, horizontal loop. So it's it's like your mega loop only cut in half. So it's a you know, so it's a transmit antenna. Um, it runs um, it's it's a delta loop. So it runs from uh, a point to another tree and then back. Um, yeah. And then I've got the 12.4, which is in the garage getting built right now to go up in the in the side lot. So, yeah. How both, high is that loop? Um, one end's about 40 feet. The other two are at about 35 okay fine yeah couldn't couldn't get up much higher the the trees are tall but the branches at the top are pretty weak so and does that receive quite nice on 80 it does it is quiet on 80 it, it's uh. quiet on all the bands but um 80s 80s it does really well on it doesn't transmit well on 80 i don't know it's it's really narrow banded uh -huh. so, yeah are you in um, a high built up area john or what's that are you in a highly built up area or are you um, quite quite lucky <laughs> It's we're not we're not in a rural area. We're just outside of the city, so there's about 75 homes in this area. Um, but um, it's the noise level isn't terrible. There's there's a couple of uh, variable speed motors that drive me nuts every once in a while, uh, but other than that, it's 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 not too bad in this area. I have a r relatively low low noise floor. How, how are you driving that loop, uh, John? Uh, coax. Um, it's got a two and a half to one yeah. ballon on it and coax out and it, and I can, it comes in. Where, go ahead. Yeah. Where, where's the feed point? Feed points in one of the corners. So, um, it, it's actually, there's a gentleman out in California. It's, well, I'm going to screw up his call sign. AG six IF maybe, um, has a, he call it the talented ballon. It's a two and a half to one ballon. Um, and I think the formula is he uses like nine, nine ninety five divided by the frequency to get your length of wire. So it's not the full one thousand five you would get on a standard loop. Um, and it it works pretty well. I've had one in a forty meter version of his because I had a, I couldn't put it up with the other trees, but I've cut that tree down. So um, and it worked really well for me. And then I went to this eighty meter version. I think I've got it too high because it's acting short. So it's not getting that ground capacitance. So I need a length uh -huh. a little right. bit. Okay. Right. I've always had a difficulty with understanding how you can have a corner of a loop. A corner of a loop. It's, uh, a it's one way. corner. Yeah, it, it's fine. You'll do fine, Mike. Don't worry. You, you don't understand. We, we'll, we'll send you a diagram. Right. <laughs> I got my crayons. Let's go. <laughs> So I just want to get back to the title of this, which was Seven Ideas. And I, I do actually have seven ideas, and I'll sum that up afterwards. But um, I want to head back to Roly now. Roly, you've got a – I think yours is about 60, 70, 80 metres all the way around your – it goes all the way around your property, doesn't it? Yeah, right. Just so, and, and that's um, basically on the ground or about on the ground? Uh, ish. Because uh, some of along the fence line, or, or, or along the fence line by my neighbours, it's around about uh, oh, 30 centimetres, a foot above the ground. But I noticed the other day that uh, as it goes along behind uh, some uh, some fence or hedging that I got on the on the back end of the property, um, I couldn't find the wire the other day, and uh, only to find that it uh, had buried itself in the in the leaf mould. So yeah. It's underground. And then uh, around the, up the other side of the property is uh, is about a foot off the ground. Yeah, 30, 30 centimeters. Then across the front of the property, I've actually mm -hmm. got it going underneath my driveway in a conduit, a piece yeah. of plastic conduit. And uh, so, uh, at least a third of the loop uh, is um, below ground level. Yeah. Now and, I think you've had better experience. Works fine. I think you've had better experience with you because, I mean, I've got three to choose from now. And um, the little loop in the main does great. From 20 up, None of nothing works other than that very, very 160-meter long end fed, which goes all the way to the U.S. as it so happens. Um, what I'm talking about receiving, and I get this quite a lot, guys, is that if you've got, let's say, a TS590 or 590SG, in fact, I think most of the, the bigger Kenwoods, mm -hmm. I think most of the bigger Icons and the Asus, in the back of the radio, there's a 
but it could be a phono jack it might be a bnc and it just says rx okay and what happens is if you haven't got one of these radios is that you go into the menu somewhere you press a button it says all future um receive send down that jack all right and then when i transmit go down my normal antenna because we had um a question here uh from uh, michael larson how do you hook it up now interesting i didn't know this but um mfj do an 1807 which is a which is a switch right mm -hmm. but without having i mean you could manually but you need two runs of coax really unless you had some sort of gadget out in the backyard to switch between your transmit and your receive uh what is the hell is that oh is that a phono to pl259 yeah. yep yep good lord yeah, yeah you've got to have one of those I need one. That's fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant for the back of the uh, the Kenwoods. Absolutely yeah, brilliant. Because I got seven millimeter, just over a quarter of an inch coax, and managed to graft it onto a phono plug. I didn't know those things existed. <laughs> All right. So for those people, and I know seven o, the Icon seven o uh, seven seventy three hundred Roly. Yep. That's got a mod. Yeah, or something. Can uh, you just walk us no, through no, that mod. No, three hundred. You can uh, you can modify the three hundred to give you a received jack on the outside. There's a few videos around. I've noticed. I've done that to my one here. I've got uh, a separate receive on the back of the three hundred. Is that you, menu you do editable? Have... How do you how do you get it to activate? Yeah, there's a menu item for it. To, um, That's activate. an IF tap, isn't it? You yeah. tap the IF yeah. button yeah. for that receive antenna. Mm. Yeah. So when you transmit, that obviously goes dead. So yeah. you don't blow itself up. No. Mm. What yeah. do you do for receive, John? Has your radio got an RX jack in the back? Or? Yeah, I've got a 101 MP here. So I've got an RX oh. receive only on coax, and I've got the phono plugs as well. But I had an FTDX 3000, which had, you know, three antenna jacks, same way. Uh, at the clubhouse, we run a uh, 7300, and uh, we've done a TR switch there, one of those 1807s. Mm -hmm. um, and what we use that most most of the time for is to do the uh, SDR play, so you have that uh, band up on the uh, screen, your band scope up on your screen. Ah, uh, but let's see. you know, and that's that's another way you can get a receive antenna or have two VFOs is you can. If you have one of the SDR plays, you can unsync it from your radio. Yeah, of course. And yeah. tune it manually and have a second VFO that way. Uh huh. You just got to be careful not to take the uh, the front end out of the. Uh, yep. The the play basically. Mm -hmm. The MFJ eighteen oh seven whatever is is that single coax to the backyard and mm -hmm. it sends twelve volts down the the coax has got a little box in the shack little box in the backyard. No, they... just one box in the shack. Yeah. So, yep. And then obviously. I mean, Yep. Uh, okay. Do you then run two coax out? Um, you can you can run one. Yeah, two coax out. You would have one for receive and one for transmit. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to pull it up now and see what that thing. Uh, is. Don't worry. Yeah, I can I can find that up in a minute. All right. Okay. So, um, let's get let's go to signal to noise now. So a couple of years ago, um just before i got into dx command i remember putting my radio on one sunday saturday afternoon and thinking this is blooming hopeless everybody was out so i went around the house switch just randomly switching off stuff you know wendy's got fairy lights and all sorts and funnily enough it was the fairy lights directly above me here that she had on on one of these little transformer things and it, wow completely cleaned me up so t if you if you suffer from high noise just be aware. It might be something in the house. It might. It might not yep. be the next door neighbours. A little bit more yep. dangerous and difficult. Cheap, it is cheap next door. wall warts, isn't it? Cheap. Um, yeah. yeah. Switch yeah. mode power supplies, basically. Ian G zero CNN. He got a little radio and a little antenna thing. Went went to his next door neighbour. He said, "Just to let you know, I'm getting a lot of interference. Do you mind if I just see if I can find out where it is?" Ian's got a really nice. I think it depends on the manner that we have. And Ian's got one of those really nice manners. Anyway, uh, he found it, fixed it or replaced it, whatever it was, uh, and it gone away. So 
if you've got the uh, the wherewithal, you've got a nice manner. If not, I mean, uh, some people can take me incorrectly. <laughs> so I'd probably get someone not like Mike. Um, <laughs> to wasn't that around. the lawnmower, lawnmower charger that he, uh, he replaced? I think it was, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. It was something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um... Anyway, work. Okay. Nathan is just letting us know for the homebrew folk, folk the schematic for how to build one of those switches, which is presuming this is an MFJ copy, is on uh, DX Commander Discord channel. Okay, fine. And if you want to know what that is, it's all it is is discord.io slash DX Commander, and you'll automatically get in there. And I have the wrong number for that TR switch. I got to find the no, right No, no, somebody else. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, the 1807 is for an SDR. It's the wrong one. Okay, fine. Yep. All right. All right, Rowley, I mm. want you to tell us the story about that telephone wire all those years ago. All right? <laughs> oh, it's a great anybody. story, and people are going to love it. Uh, it was interesting and, until the local. Uh, I was up uh, very, uh, in a very remote country area, very, very quiet indeed. There's just nothing around. And there happened to be a disused uh, telephone party line. You know, the old, um, the old ring up the old party line type thing. Mm. Uh, that's too far ago for but, me, Roly. Oh, okay. I'm um, like, um, party line, yeah. <laughs> we'll explain it Sorry, to you I'm later. Sorry, I'm pressing too many buttons here. <laughs> it's okay, John. It, it just okay. happened to just happened to run dead straight, like as straight as straight okay. uh, towards, towards the States for two kilometers that's amazing and so it's extremely long yeah and uh, uh i was able to connect onto that the yeah. interesting thing that uh, now that's an extra long 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 beverage in, yeah. any, in anybody's uh, language the interesting thing is uh it didn't seem to matter too much whether they had the thing terminated or non-terminated at the far end oh uh -huh, yeah as a traditional that, beverage that long yeah, maybe. Um, if I put some instrumentation on it and measured it, it mm. it says, "Yeah, I, you, you've made a difference." To the ears, it didn't make a subtle difference, uh, really. Mm. But that, yeah, that was interesting. And if, uh, of course, um, you were transmitting everybody... on that and receiving. Yeah, yeah. So. The interesting thing from a transmit point of view was that um, depending on frequency, it became very, very directional. Um, but uh -huh. then on the higher frequencies, like your 10 meters and so on, that it has so many Loads. spikes or, uh, left, right, Loops. center on the yeah. thing. Oh, it, became more, it became very, very uh, good for local stuff as yeah. well as to the, the DX. Yeah. So, uh, so this was traditionally 40 foot up, about 12 meter telephone. Yeah, yeah, a normal yeah. telephone line yeah. height, you know. Mm. Yeah. Disused, obviously. Folks yeah, don't well, try yeah, that at home, right? yeah. <laughs> 50, 50 yeah, volts well, down, well, your, uh, <laughs> down your coax if, uh, if it had been in use. It's, it's, only, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it's no longer there. I noticed that uh, the locals, uh, some of the, some, either some of the locals have found it and uh, decided the copper value was pretty good. so uh, Snipped it off. It's all gone now, but yeah, yeah. Now, I also remember you telling me, and I've I've had this before, where somebody actually thought that I was lying. I remember how I built a two-element Yagi for forty meters, borrowed a hundred-foot tower, and got it up at a hundred foot. Foot. Now, hmm. it's very few of us have used two-element on on forty, because um, at that height, because it takes a lot of hardware, and you've either got a tower and you haven't, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But, um, of course, late in the afternoon, uh, I was following the direction of the rotator and happened to be tw on 20 and I've just got to go with 40. And uh, so I'm calling CQ. And uh, your favourites, Woli, came in, all the Indonesians, and had this pile up to Indonesia. And there was people in the UK that um, actually told me that I was making it up. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> they, yeah, I used to get that a lot. They couldn't they used to hear. Get that. Yeah. I used to get the, that a lot on 80 meters. The locals would be going, oh, here's, you know, you're dreaming. So I, I'd have a, a two meter handy with me. I'd say, well, 
uh, listen to this. Yeah. And of course, you hear some G station calling Z01 BQD, uh, yeah. da 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 da. And, uh, and they, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I said, well, there's a big difference between trying to operate uh, in the city with a um, regular little dipole or something like that than. Yeah, getting out anyway. into yeah. into the countryside, we, so all, we all can put up a, all about the noise. All about the noise. Yep. We yeah. can put up a, a big antennas and so on like that. Uh, mm. I mean, Cal, you're you're very fortunate to be able to. I think the the fortunate thing about you, what you've got your setup, Cal, is that you've got two uh, totally different type of antennas. Ah, one one right. being the very long wire, and the other yeah. one being the loop. And, and it's been fascinating for, for me to listen in on your, your live streams and, yeah. and hear what is what is actually happening on between the loop and the long wire. Yes. Some, you know, you, you hear it in one ear, then it, it comes it across the, hear, in the other ear, and sometimes it really misses with, you, with yeah. your head where you get that sort of phased yeah. disparity in the middle. And, uh, and clearly, under different circumstances, propagation circumstances or whatever, Things are happening between the two I know, antennas. I know. So, and let's so just d- clear one thing up, actually, for the folks back home. Sometimes people think that if, if John is transmitting horizontally from the USA and I'm picking him up in the UK, by the time it gets to me, his signal's going to be all over the shot. All right? it, so it, it, does, it doesn't it does kind of really matter. Now, yeah, just close. Like, you know, you get some separation if they're close, about what 30, 40 dB of separation, vertical versus long. Yes, but that's you know, right. yeah, yeah. Once yeah. it hits once the it's, atmosphere, it's once tumbling. it's done its first hop, it's, yeah, it's, it's gone. It's what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying, uh, Cal, is that, that one antenna is not necessarily the answer. Put it that way. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, it's, you know. I think if you're going to if you're going to be thinking, um, well, uh, these guys are come up with are going to come up with a golden bullet. No, you're dreaming because. Uh, no, That's right. Yeah. So what this has demonstrated to me, Rowley, and I'm glad you pointed it out, is that when you've got one antenna only and you get QSB, it's just QSB. When you've got two antennas and one in each ear, you will hear that QSB, not every time, but you'll hear that QSB sometimes disappear from that antenna and come right up on this antenna. And yeah. it really yeah. has, I think it's something to do with the polarisation, angle of dangle and a few other things. So if you are planning your next radio, I, I thoroughly recommend you finding a way of either getting a 2 FEFO radio or what J- John suggests, we've got a little SDR. Is it SDR play you can you could use? You could use that in the other ear, could you, John? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, you need a mixer yep. to do it, but yeah, you can do it. Yeah, but then you can you can do that. By the way, on the live stream itself, uh, Roly, I separate left and right completely. For me... Uh, at the radio, I've got it, I think, on an 80-20 mix. So I don't get quite as separated as yeah. you get on the receive. But yeah, I, I would. That. I mean, I mean, Mike, Mike's got a fantastic radio, an 890. But um, just having those two antennas, particularly if one's vertical and one's uh, horizontal. First time I discovered that, by the way, it was just a low dipole and a basic vertical. And it gave yeah. me such a 3D, particularly on 40. It was lovely. Really nice. That's one thing I really want to do. I, I mean, unfortunately, or stupidly, I sold my um, my 590, um, which oh, would have been the companion to the to the 890, because the 890 and the 590 SG actually connect together to act as a That's dual a receive or transmit system. Um, I bet you didn't know uh, that. Oh. I, I messed you have up an 890 and a 590, and the 590, you connect them up, becomes VFO2. Yeah. Via the CAT, yeah, via the CAT system. They actually work each other, uh, which is great, you know, um, mm. and it's a mistake. One of the things I'm going to do this summer is actually take the DX Commander to France with me, because I don't know if you remember that I went to, uh, to France okay. last, this, this last year um, with um, a long wire. Um, and where we've got the house in France, it's really, really quiet. There's absolutely no, um, there's no noise on the antennas at all. And I mean, I did, zilch. Didn't realise that. Didn't realise uh, Callum Solid by bilingual Gaudish commander. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you've 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 got Google to Translate. Teach, you've got to teach it. Yeah, you've got to do the Google Translate, oh, but it, it does oh, work. That's it. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, and, got it. <laughs> But I really want to test in, in that absolute <laughs> quiet environment 
um, the difference between um, a, a long wire and, and uh, the, the, the vertical, because that would be brilliant, because you've got no, um, no interference, no noise to worry about. So you yeah. can actually get a full effect of that. So that's, that's an interesting experiment, I think. Yeah, but you'll have to do that on a manual yeah. switch then, wouldn't you, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, because I'll only take the uh, the eight uh, eight five seven. I want to yeah. go mad. Okay, I haven't got room in the car. <laughs> uh, good question from uh, Kevin, by the way. It was just talking about rejection because, I mean, there's there's more than one uh, way of skinning a cat. Speak to my wife about that. <laughs> <laughs> there's more than one way of skinning a cat, um, which is if you can't receive so well in that direction, well, can you hear worse that way? Because that helps. J Roly, you do that with Indonesia, don't you? Yeah, in, indeed. Uh, um, I have a remote location where I've got a couple of DH commanders sitting up uh, on 20 meters, as is, and one of them is really a, a passive reflector. And the only reason why I use that is to so I can uh, I pick it up and carry the darn thing around and put it up in different locations. But I've got the, the locations uh, conveniently marked out in the paddock now. Mm. And, and that the oh, the only reason I put that is so I can get some rejection from Japan, Indonesia, China. Um, mm. Otherwise, it uh, punching through to into Europe sometimes can be a real, real problem uh, because yeah. of that. So that you've wall. got let's say two verticals. Let's say what on forty yep. or twenty doesn't matter. Twenty meters. So mm -hmm. not only are you getting rejection off the back, this one's a little bit longer. I seem to remember uh, yep. by about five percent. Yep. And you've got about um, just under a quarter of a wavelength distance. A fraction under a quarter, meters. yeah. Uh, yeah. About 8.7 it, it, metres, is it? I think it's something like about yeah, eight in that half. area, yeah. yeah about 85% yeah. of a quarter wave. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, now you're getting rejection off the back and you're getting another 3. Yeah. In fact, and you reckon more than 3 dB. For from yeah, yeah. A, a bit of lift on the front as well. And it, 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 it certainly uh, certainly does work. Do you ground plane the uh, the back reflector? Yeah, yeah, I connect that up to a ground plane. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just have a parasitic parasitic array. Yeah, it's it's, it's, just, it's yeah. straight out. Yeah, so you can do the same straight thing out parasitic, uh, John. Yeah. Yeah. I've tried the I've tried phasing. You know, the, doing the the phasing trick. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of effort for two dB. Not a, not a lot more. Gain is there that extra gain? Do you think to connect you here? I think the uh, from, if you put the instrument on it and measure it and so on, it says yes, you're getting more gain. Uh, yeah. But you know, when you come in, to get back into the shack, put the headphones on, you go, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. I think you probably get better front to back rejection with a phased pair than you right. would parasitic pair. Quite, quite uh -huh. possibly, uh, John. But on the, on the twenty meter band, surely it's just easier. Uh, to have um, a parasitic reflector and also a um, a um, not driven. What's the word for it? Um, the thing that goes in the front of it. So you have got the director. The a director. Thank you very much. So you could probably have a, have a director, twenty meter director as well, because you know that's not going to be too big, is it? Uh, no, it's not too big. I haven't tried a uh, but if he's uh, trying to move them as well, but yeah, it mean it means moving two poles instead of one. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I've tried well. the three and it worked yeah, a treat, well. and I and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> and I sold it as a kit, and a few people have had some SWR issues, and I, I've never worked it out. I didn't have any SWR issues with it. No. With three in a row, John? No, no SWR okay. issues. I built built it fine. I built it for twenty using the seven meter poles. No worries. Uh, okay. And then I turned that into the triangle, of course. But uh, yes, okay. I guess it would be the spacing that's causing yeah. the SWR issue anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a quarter, quarter on the back side. You can go maybe you know eighty five, ninety percent of a quarter wave, and on the front side, your the director is going to be a little bit shorter. It's going to be about sixty, sixty five percent of a okay. quarter wave. Yeah, a quarter wave. Yeah. Yep. Right. And well, so people tend to John space them built quarter, me. Though, so. yeah. John built me. Bloody hell, uh, John! It's over a year ago. You built me that triangular array. We still haven't got it up yet, but. Hey, Let me negotiate just... with a landlord because I want a bit of space. I want to put that down the road. Roland, if you want to, if you want to buy directional phased array, I'll I'll build you the box, send it over to you. You can build your phasing cables. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, done. oh yeah. right, Roly and John hook up. There's a couple of videos you watch out for. John building it and Roly installing it. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so I am conscious that there are people who don't who don't have 160 meters of space like I did for that experiment last week, right? And there was somebody who put a comment on which was uh, it was a waste of time doing that experiment because very few people have got 160 meters. Well, buy uh, a new house. <laughs> So what do I do? Not publish it? You know, it's interesting stuff, and and um, and it and it, it draws us to the attention of that signals and noise and things like loops on the ground because we publish that data as well. And that's only fifteen foot square. So I think most people in this hobby, that are a little bit more mature, that perhaps got some sort of house, can normally find fifteen feet, right? That's all. Uh, so if you're I mean, in a high I'm... noise environment, you know, even if it's even if you're just a Saturday afternoon guy on 40, you know, or a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday morning guy on 40 or 80, even in a high noise environment, you will find that that will improve your signal noise ratio very, very much. And by the way, I did. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I've got to do this. Somebody's suggesting that we do a GoFundMe drive to buy 300 acres of land for antenna experiments. Right? <laughs> it's not going to happen, right? Um, I'll just pay the landlord there. another thousand. Um, Look, there, there's a, there is an answer for the small garden. Okay, there yeah. is an answer for the small garden. Bring the noise um, ratio down. You won't mm. be able to transmit on it particularly well, although people have, and it does work. And that's to do the magnetic loop approach to it. Yeah. It's a really, really brilliant receive antenna. Uh, brilliant receive antenna. Um, and you can multiband it as long as you, you know, put a decent sized capacitor on it. It will receive. I use mine a heck of a lot for yeah. when I've got when it's a noisy band. I transmit on the DX Commando receive on the loop, and it works incredibly well. Oh, you, do, don't, yeah. you don't need a lot of space for um, you know for a, a two and a half meter in diameter or a one meter in diameter loop. Mm. Like that's that's kind of the concept I have with this receive antenna I'm putting up. It's a you know it's just a loop of coax mm -hmm. with a box at the bottom that has a preamp in it. There's no yeah. capacitor or anything to tune it. So uh -huh. all you're doing is feeding power down there to turn on the preamp and right. you're, you're, you're mono you're mono banding basically, but it will receive enough. No, it's supposed yeah. to be, you know, 30 megahertz down to one or 10 to down to 160. Okay, yeah. So I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm just playing around with it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I would tend to agree with you because Mike's very much into mag loops where mm -hmm. this is actually just is receiving just the, receive loop, yeah. Yeah, receive loop, yeah. yeah and okay, well, what else? Small receive loop. They haven't got 160 meters of land, so they can put a small loop on the ground. I'll tell you, the other thing I've done is... Um, a, a 40 meter a 40 meter square loop is actually mm -hmm. 10 10 meters well it's 30 foot by 30 foot square mm -hmm. right 10 by 10 yep now roly's fitted one twice that size in and it goes all the way around his house all right goes under the drive <laughs> and back up the other side uh, and that works because mm -hmm. uh, roly lives you know in close confinement with others as well so you've got that you've got the fact that you should drop your fairy lights out and find out where that noise is coming from and do a job there. And in fact, if you're in a local club and you put the call out, very often this sort of geeky techno nerd would love to come out, you know, with a couple of guys, just make the, someone like John will turn up. <laughs> um, no! <laughs> yeah. we, we did that We did that for a club. You've member. done that, have you? Yeah, he, he had uh, some, I mean, horrendous noise, and it was across a lot of the bands. We went out there, and a buddy of mine, W3SPC, we went out and we start shutting off all his breakers in his house. And then we turned them on one at a time. And we eventually got to his kitchen and Fantastic. he had a vacuum sealer that was plugged in full time in the kitchen. And that thing was putting out some crazy noise. I'm like, Ted, just unplug this thing. <laughs> and, you know, all his noise went away. It was yeah. just amazing. Mm -hmm. It was one, one appliance. Yep. Uh, Mike, have you ever found local noise in your house? Oh yeah. Uh, Apart yeah, from was... humans, <laughs> I was going to say yeah. My I was going to say my youngest son, he's uh, <laughs> the biggest cause of noise in this house. To be honest with you, but um, yeah, no, we we have had um, the odd wall wart. You know, the the um, 
uh, they're just dreadful, aren't they? You get some cheap ones, um, and they they just radiate so much noise. Um, but the the biggest thing I found actually was my old gas boilers um, motor that used to used to push the water around the radiators. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That used to create so much noise; it was unbelievable. And I used to be hours and hours trying to track it down and in the end i realized it was only when the heating was on that i had the noise yeah so yeah i yeah. definitely had that next door yeah you, you could tell and i'll tell you what it was it was uh, i think some thermostats can arc before it yep. makes a contact and you get this arcing going on for 10 minutes or so it looks like lightning across your screen yeah. i'll bet yeah <laughs> well you know um, yeah. somebody's yeah. asking about beverages okay now so what we end up be doing Thank on this much. channel is <laughs> what we're doing on this channel is we've got we've got the 160 meters. I want to cut that in half, only temporarily, just to see what the difference is. Cut it in half again. Yep. There's a number of experiments we've got to do. All right. So uh, one of them is we'll get the drone and a bit of fishing line. We'll put this thing right over the top of the trees, just see what I mean, we might get a fantastic transmit, according to uh, well not according to but. Um, Rowley's experience with his transmit on the telephone line. Anyway, we'll make some short ones, we'll make some long ones. But I want to head, there was a good uh, question uh, a minute ago about um, beverages and specifically how, um, oh, I just saw it. Uh, here we are, what are your thoughts on a beverage on the ground? We'll do that as well. So let's just clear up, I'll, I'll let uh, I'll let Rowley explain. I mean, I can do it, but I do a lot of the chatting. Rowley. Um, the 1923, 33 patent from, I think it was Harold Beveridge. Uh, just explain how that works for us, will you? Well, not that old, but uh, however. <laughs> well, you, I thought you, I thought you proofread <laughs> yeah, it. He helped him. <laughs> I thought <laughs> Rowley proofread it. Yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, well, <laughs> he, he said, Harold, here, hold the other end of this. <laughs> yeah, settle down, Mike, you'll be all right. Yeah, I'll mute him, it's all right. A beverage antenna really is just a, your, your straight long wire antenna, uh, but it's uh, terminated in the uh, characteristic impedance of that antenna, which yeah. tends to be around about anywhere between your 200 and 400 ohms uh, uh, resistor at the far end of the long mm. wire. And it's a now, non... Uh, Inductive resistor. Inductive. Yeah. I mean, it's just a non-inductive uh, resistor. Yeah, you can buy them online uh, nowadays uh, in the um, in a quite a nice little package. But uh, yeah. make sure it is non-inductive. Non or if you've got a, or if you've got a real old, 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 old valve radio that has the uh, morganite um, carbon type resistors in them, yeah. Rip them out and uh, use those because <laughs> they're really, really good. Uh, however, in terminating that uh, end of the beverage, you terminate it down to down to ground. Yeah. yeah. Now the ground stake itself will have a ground resistance, which is in series with that terminating resistor. Mm. So it so goes uh, into the resistor, into your ground stake. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. possibly radials as well at the very end. I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> No, no there's, well, there's two. There's a couple of schools of thought on that. I think okay. if you grab your ARRL manual type thing, they'll have they'll show radials at the far end there, but it um, uh, it does interfere actually with the pattern quite a bit. So just a single point earth at okay. both ends of the of your right. Um, your so you take the wire. braid of the feeder, the coax, sink that into the ground as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's what I, I believe they call a travelling wave antenna so for this the, is another name for it yeah. yeah so in english ignoring all science a minute imagine it like this you've got a wave coming along and effectively this wave is stacking up so by the time it gets to the feed point it's all in phase mm -hmm. and you just got more energy there john would you say that's a kind of a nice way of explaining it in yeah, english exactly yeah you right. just you stack all the waves up and as they interfere with each other when they're when they're in phase they couple and when they're out mm. of phase they cancel so um as you get them down that line they all mm. come into phase and it increases your signal at that end yeah, amplifies yeah. naturally yep. yeah it, it, Thank it you, increases your, increases your signal in the direction of the wire right? yep. so 
yeah it, it's just, it's just like uh so they're really easy to aim you it's just like aiming a rifle you you point the wire where you want to go yeah and the longer it is the more directional it becomes yeah although yeah. Uh, as you go up in frequency you also get a uh, quite a mushroom effect yeah. around it as well so okay then if so you're running that on 10 meters it, it, it's a it's almost like a never sent in yeah. on ten, uh, in 10 meters really totally counterintuitive to what you think it doesn't go sideways it goes down the length of the wire that's yeah, right and that's very long. narrow and just because it's low to the ground doesn't mean to say it's going to be envious either does no. it no that's no. that would no, that's no. what helps with your signal ratio signal yeah. noise ratio mm -hmm. because the lower you get to the ground the more yeah. you knock down the noise so now originally the in the patent and you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, people were building these things normally above head height, you know, so, you know, things like antlers. Mike hasn't got antlers at this time of year, but normally has. It's true, um, it's true, they're yeah. shedded. It's, it's shedded, yeah. <laughs> but, shedded. You know, you, you want to get, get them out of the way of the antlers and that sort of thing. However, some people more recently have been experimenting with a beverage on the ground, which is where the loop on the ground guy got his idea from, I think. He, he mentions that in his article. So the next thing we've got to do is put it on the ground. Now, uh, I've read some articles that say it doesn't need to be two wavelengths, 10 wavelengths, 100 wavelengths. I think you can get some improvement from possibly even half a wavelength or a wavelength. So on 20 meter, it, you know, you might be able to, you know, face it to Europe. Let's say John puts a tiny beverage on the ground and uh, might just lift me up a tiny bit, just a whisker, you know. But that's the experiment. So I'm sure John and me and a few others want to do. You know, it's in interesting. So that's that's the beverage. What I did was a was an accident. It was actually um, it was a 160 meter experiment. That when I modelled it, I realised that actually on 20, 15, and 10, well, and 40 and 80, actually, I could be getting some interesting gain. And also the fact that it would be a transmit antenna as well, because a beverage, if you transmitted, the chances are you'd blow up the resistor at the other end. Any, any of you guys that uh, do uh, have a little bit of farm uh, area or something like that, you want to run out of beverage, you want to know how to mount it uh, go down to your local uh, farmer supply and buy a whole lot of electric fence um standoffs you know yes. they're about a meter they're about a meter high and they're in got an That's right. uh, yeah not too expensive thing at the top well, and uh just run those out and just um, jump on them stick them in the ground and just run your wire right along the top it works mm. really really well mm -hmm. one, of, one of the experience i want to try is i've got a lot next door to me that's where the DX commander is going to go in a, in a clearing I've made, but it's a wooded lot and it's about 600 feet square uh, on the outside perimeter of it. And I've thought about putting a loop either on the ground or about six or eight feet high because I've got deer that run through that, that mm. lot, but I'm just trying, I'm struggling with what kind of transformer I should use there as regards to what that's going to look like, whether it's going to be four to one or, or two and a half mm. one or 64 to one or what I'd, I'd use a 110 with a lot of voltage to stop the deer from running through <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hill, i like the deer except they eat my wife's plants and then she gets mad so. right Ro roly's gonna show us something <laughs> i personally before roly starts john i would uh, i suggest a four to one would just do fine if you've got one knocking around but i mean oh, yeah. i could be wrong i mean a nine to one might work as well of course roly what are you showing us mate uh, that's just a uh, little nine to one transformer. So the your um, uh, okay, your PLT five nine here, and the loop goes there and there. Mm. So that's binocular just a little, core. Is it binocular, binocular core? Binocular. Where is it? A little okay. binocular core in there. Yeah. Yeah. So is that like a loop on the ground box? By the look of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You both got one. My goodness. And so, and so, yeah, yeah. That's not going to take a kilowatt through it. So don't try it. Mm. <laughs> Oh, these but, are receiving um, antennas, so we should be It's all just right. straight out received, so that's what I'm using <laughs> yeah, for uh, a nine to yeah. one. That's a nine to one transformer. Mm. The, and what I what I find with the using the transformer is that it does actually uh, marginally improve the signal to noise ratio simply because you got your impedance matching uh, correct. Okay, it's a four to one. Naturally, got some choking going on as well, John. Say again. Do you think a four to one transformer or ballon, if you like, has that naturally got some choking? 
going I, on or do you need I, to i don't think so most if you buy yeah. one of the commercially made ones most of most of them have a one-to-one -one, uh choke ballon built into them or you uh -huh. can buy them that way yeah so uh, yeah i i i would I wouldn't mm. think there would be any choking in there. Mike, you might know better than me. No, no, I, I don't disagree. But because of the fact that you, you could earth um, the the shield, you, you'll yeah. get a natural um, well, yeah. Do it that way. bit of choking anyway from that. So, yeah, it depends how it's wound. If it's uh, completely coupled, then it will. But if it's I've, got, wound, uh, I've got a very high inductance choke for uh, the lower bands, and uh, I was going to fit that to my beverage just to see if it, well, beverage, sorry. My very long wire, just to well, see if that would help. To use Rowley's term, give it a go. Give it a go. Buck off, Mike. Well, give it a go. See if it works. Yeah, give it a go. I keep okay. it. Uh, in, in all in all of these things, really, uh, that's what it gets down to. I isn't know. It? Just, just give I know. it a go. You'll you'll surprise yourself in many uh, in many occasions. Mm. So um, months ago, uh, no, it must have been a couple of years ago, I remember Rowley used the, the term conventional wisdom tells us that, and I'm going to shove this down Rowley's throat for, for, for eternity, but he, he used these words and it, and, it, and it was just a perfect way. But conventional wisdom tells us that our transmit antenna is our receive antenna, okay? I mean, because it works. It does work. What we're on about is how do we get more out of that? And that's this what this whole discussion is. What I'd like you to do, what I'd like to do now, and this uh, I might stop it halfway through. Um, I've got a small clip I want to pay, play you, and this is the loop on the ground versus, and that's the 15-foot square, versus the 90-meter loop versus the vertical. Now, it's a bit of an unfair test because it's daytime on 40, and you would expect a low-to-the-ground dipole or a low-to-ground loop to work very well but listen how well this very small loop works and you if you read the screen it will show you exactly which one's going on so here we go only a four delta whiskey x-ray mike only a four and six only a four and six mike but uh, i can hear you uh, uh, it, 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 a, a problem it's a small loop the adjacent channel noise uh it's actually the same with the robert uh, GW6 GBY, when allowed four, five, and seven, <laughs> but uh, uh, not not uh, that brilliant this morning. But uh, there you go, it's uh, Small uh, again. All, all that uh, comes and goes, and uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, it's all signal to noise, isn't it? All signal to noise. Signal I to thought noise. that was the one. I'm not quite sure whether the vertical was in there actually, but never mind. Here's the vertical was, you know, but uh, I must say picks up everything yeah i must say that oh, i've been using a vertical as you've all heard every friday at 12 o'clock utc middle of the day for us and when in the end of march that will be 11 o'clock local time so it's uh, spring forward no that won't be uh, i'll try and keep it at 12 utc i think that's, that'll be one o'clock for us won't it mike i think yeah the end of march anyway yep uh, I've been amazed how well the vertical works on 1840 during the day when really it shouldn't, uh, you know, it, it just shouldn't work as well. And it does. And I, I want to know, is it because I got fantastic ground or something? I mean, Roly, you've, you must have listened to half these streams. Why is my vertical or is actually verticals quite good anyway? And we just need to get in our heads that for transmit, you're fine. And if you want a better signal noise ratio, have a little loop on the ground or something. Well, mainly because we're for many, many years we've been uh, yagiized. Yes. <laughs> and so nicely put. Uh, yagiized. Yeah. Uh, no disparity. No disparity uh, at all. Uh, but uh, we've been horizontally polarized for so long, and, and particularly in the upper bands, and that's all that we know. But um, when you get back be beyond that, uh, before um, tri-band antennas and uh, multi-element uh, horizontal antennas uh, were in vogue, most of our antennas and those, uh, were of, uh, of the vertical type, made out of lumps of wire. Yeah. We're, we're, in a way, 
from my point of view, we almost come full circle and we're just rediscovering the, the joys of, uh, of vertical. Yeah. Particularly, um, not so much on the transmitter, but on the receive. The, the inverse is, uh, is true, though. Mm. Um, transmit will, uh, will work very well indeed. We just haven't um, had that many vertical um, uh, antennas uh, commercially available. <laughs> For the uh, modern amateur who wants to be able to just go yeah. down the shop and buy one. Yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got another yeah. um, and, tact on that, if I may. Sure is, um, is that vertical antennas, um, you receive all angles of transmission. All no, from angles very low. Are you talking about angles from coming really, in? From, yeah, from really low to, yeah. to flat to high or whatever. You're receiving yeah. it on a vertical because it is literally straight yeah. up you know so everything's yeah, there's coming a bit of a hole it. right at the top but i would yeah. agree yeah you receive uh, everywhere with, yeah. with a horizontal depending on how i how high off the ground it is you're receiving certain uh, angles of of transmission on it that being said if you're in a built-up area your vertical is not particularly going to be good at the very low angles because you've got too much shielding it so it's going back to the old average isn't it you know um there's no golden bullet or well, I, John took a breath in and I thought he was about to say something, but I'm because I make my go. living out of selling antennas and bits of wire and all sorts of other things. I was really interested in this whole vertical horizontal thing. I mean, more motivated, if you like, than almost anybody I know. Hmm. And um, but when, it, when you read all the papers and, and distill it all down and look at the modeling and so on, so on and so forth. If you have a little bit of noise 100 metres away that propagates, like you know, that, John, your, your friend's vacuum thing, whatever, and you're 100 metres away, in the main, all that will be probably, it might not be polarised in any way, shape or form, but what's happening is by the time it's gone 100 metres, all the horizontal polarised signal is absorbed more into the ground than the vertical right. polarisation. I'd go with that. Your vertical antenna is also better at receiving low angle than your horizontal. It just is. Yep. We know that. We've done all the modelling and we've been out in the field and done all this. Therefore, it's actually doing its job. It's not that the vertical is noisy. It's that it's picking up what it should pick up. Because right. if we go, if you, t I mean, this is why slash P, POTA, SOTA, is such good fun in the modern world because you can buy a nice little box now for under a thousand dollars thousand pounds and by the way all hobbies cost money all right golf you think you'll find is a lot more expensive and so is fishing yeah, you'd have to tell me right that and a big old car battery you know go to the local garage and say hey have you changed the battery out of a big bmw 7 series that's still got 60 percent of its power left and they'll go yeah i have one it's a bit of a lug all right but anyway Charge it up as best you can. You'll still get all day out of it, 100 watts. Mm. And go out with a, a piece of wire, right? We did a challenge. All of us on the stream here, we did a challenge not so long ago, and we marked 45 people, built a vertical for 20 metres out of scrap for pennies, didn't they, boys? Yep. Chuck them up in trees and everything else. It, you, you don't need to buy one of my antennas. You just need a radio and a power source and mm. a scrap piece of paper for your, for your logging. And you'll find you're out in the middle of nowhere... Vertical isn't noisy, right, at all. It's just not designed. It's not picking up what it's designed to pick up, which is the low angle of radiation from John's friend's vacuum thing. Yeah, yep, exactly. Well, you know, when I was down in St. John, I had zero noise floor. I was in the middle of the national park. I mean, I had zero noise floor. And that DX commander I had set up the expedition versus that off center fed dipole I had at 45, 50 feet. The ex commander outperformed it every time. There was, it was almost equal on twenty, but everything else, yeah. it was it was. Much Mind better. you, in fairness, you you had a bit of height on twenty for that dipole, didn't you? You were yeah, I was, at, at, I was at forty to fifty feet on that dipole. Yeah, so um, now I mean that and is on 40, 40, the dipole was problematic because it was so close to the house; it was interfering with the radio. But um, the uh, the the DX Commander, I mean, they were about equal on 20. Everywhere else, the DX Commander yeah. smashed it. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you know, uh, getting up to three-quarters wave mm -hmm. above the ground 
no. on a dipole it is is super. It really yep. is. It really is. Uh, I was about to say that um, Ham Radio DX, he's just gone live with Steve, temporary offline. Mm -hmm. I think he goes live about now yeah. if you wanted to go across. I'm not trying to get rid of you, okay, but we're going to be winding down now. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for, for coming along. Um, uh, from memory, what we discussed is uh, getting your background noise down, uh, loops on the ground, bigger loops on the ground, very long end feds. We, we, we just started that whole experiment. Right? I don't know anybody really that's done very well, apart from your accident with your telephone pole, but someone has intentionally gone out to try a very long end fed to see what it'd be like on receive. So that's, that, that's fun. And we got the beverage. And I've, I've got to say that a low to the ground dipole cuts for probably 30 meters, which is somewhere between 40 and 20, all right? Um, fairly low fence height. I think you'd also be surprised at how well that would receive if you're interested in cutting down your noise, right? Mm, it's not absolutely. going to give you any more horsepower in terms of your receive grunt, right? Like Rowley was telling us about them and, and John, either the phased verticals or parasitic. That, that can not only give you front to back, but give you a bit of grunt forward as well. So there's mm. some ideas for you. And if you're in an apartment at uh, 200 feet up in the air, frankly, anything will work. <laughs> you put, a mag, put a mag loop out on the balcony. Mag That's loop out on the way. balcony. Yeah, you'll be so Tell me, bit. does a mag, yeah. mag loop like being high as well as a little bit of wire? It doesn't care. It does, does not care what height fits at. It can be against the ground and it will still receive as well as it would wow. if it was up there. Yeah, they're yeah. just... You know, they're very narrow band or high Q, so yep. you got to play around with them. But, man, they're good antennas. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, well, I hope you're having a good time. We've had an hour of this. I think it's probably enough uh, for you to suffer us, All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There's been quite a few people. There's 243 on the stream. I've got a nice little right. outro for you, which is a little bit different. Okay. It's and me belly that, dancing. He... <laughs> Mike's going to dance. All right. <laughs> I've just got to remember what button to blooming press now. Okay, so I'm going to press this. <laughs> it will automatically mute us. All right, but we'll probably stay here for 10 minutes afterwards when you've gone. All right, and we'll talk about you. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a good chat? Anything I think you think I've left out, Roly? No, I think that's, that's enough for one, one effort. One I session. Mean, there's, a, there's, there's a lot to absorb there. There is really. Is. Yeah. But uh, I do encourage people get out and give it a go. Just. That's the secret. Receiving Give antennas. It a go. For yeah. the radio amateur. Yeah, it's an ARL book. It's fantastic. A lot of ideas in here. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. And if you I'll want a bigger source, this, that one. Low band DX book. <laughs> yeah. ON4 UN. Yeah, the other one. Too. Right here. Yeah. That's right. The, the that, is, that is indeed a good book. Yeah, read really a lot of this Bible. stuff. <laughs> Do read a lot of this stuff with a pinch of salt. So ON4 UN. We'll tell you that unless you've got 120 radials, you're off your head. Uh, you know, yeah. he, he, he was a bit paranoid, so don't worry about that. Uh, John, anything else you think? No, I think we're good. Mike, are you happy? No, all good. All very good indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, may the force be with you. Thanks for joining us tonight. And, uh, hey, you never know. Maybe once a month we'll come on and uh, give you a, a Sunday night here on the DX Commander Roadshow. I'll hit this button and it's all over. Live long. Yeah.